you're in the drone community and you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably seen the videos about toroidal props. You've also probably seen the video from Mark Rober about the zipline props, the kind of off balance looking, supposedly silent props. That's what we're gonna talk about today. In this video, we're gonna design a set of off balanced or at least counterweighted props and see if we can get them to fly. And there will be flight, but a lot of that flight is just going to be pieces of props flying apart. So before we get started, I do have links in the description of this video where you can download these STL files and actually try to print them yourselves or just see how they look. You're free to use them any way you want, redesign them and try to make them better. That's kind of the goal here. The zipline props have a few key features that we're gonna to try to replicate. One, at least two blades on the same side of the center axis. Two, an adjustable counterweight to balance the prop. And three, those two blades need to be offset vertically so they're less likely to share the same air on a given rotation. Offsetting the props vertically means we will have to increase the height of the hub, but we'll need to keep it short enough for the nut to reach the motor. For these to be strong enough, we're gonna to have to actually cut out the center of the hub to allow the nut to be inset. The idea is to have the least amount of turbulence as possible for each rotation of the prop. Since they're on the same side and offset vertically, they should be able to rotate a full 360 degrees before returning to potentially turbulent air. In essence, less turbulence equals less noise. Or at least, that's the theory. The first set of props are going to be for our seven inch quad and use putty as a counterweight. You can easily find this putty on Amazon for only a few dollars. We decided to go with PLA since it is the easiest to print and gets us to failure the quickest. Unfortunately, PLA is also one of the weakest materials we could use. You'll see a theme here, design, print, fail, redesign. This is my favorite way of designing something and the reason 3D printers are so revolutionary. We can make adjustments and be ready for another failure in a matter of hours, not weeks or months. Clearly, we need more strength. Our next attempt is going to be with PETG. We are going to stick with the same counterweighted method and not waste any time painting the props. It's essentially what water bottles are made out of and is substantially stronger while also being somewhat flexible. The amount of forces at work here require some flexibility in the material. And while this appears to be a little better, it's clearly still not strong enough. One of the disadvantages of printing these things standing up versus laying flat is your layer lines are not as strong that way. So when you print with your layer lines stacked on top of each other, they can actually separate. And there's a lot of force when those props spin up. And if we try to print them laying flat, we need too many supports and it gets messy and the texture's bad. And we could use like a soluble filament, but that's a little more time I don't wanna spend on this batch. So what we're gonna do is use a process called annealing where we actually try to kind of melt the layers together a little bit and help them be a little more durable. Oh, and this is our annealer. The Ninja Air Fryer. This should work pretty well. Gotta make sure these all point down because the blades will like, if they're pointing straight up in the air like this, they'll probably bend over. That will go all the way to 195. I think this is an hours thing. So let's take this down to like two hours. The air fryer just finished up. Let's see how these guys turned out. Oh, uh, I think we have one failure. It looks like one of these rotated while it was in the air fryer. <laughs> but yeah, the rest of these look pretty good. And while they're still warm, you can actually adjust them. Yeah, they still bend if they're a little crooked or anything. And you could even make other little aerodynamic adjustments while you're at it. But this one's a goner and that's why we threw extras in there. The next step is to balance the props. Using a $20 balancing stand from Amazon and a knife or Dremel, we can easily shave off the weight needed to balance the prop in any direction. For the sake of 3D printed props, we're not gonna need to get as detailed as we might with a normal prop that you would expect to last for dozens of flights. Fortunately, if these props don't last, we have backups already printing. Oh, there they are. Those look, well, pretty good. Looks like we had a little bit of a bubble right here, which could be a problem. That might split a little easier than we like, so 
Let's pull these off of here. That is actually going to be a weak point, which will allow these to break. Yeah, a little easier. Like, so there can't be any imperfections in these props at all. And unfortunately, that one's no good. But hey, we have one more spare. So let's just get another set going. You might notice we switched to an FPV drone with five inch props instead of the seven inch quad we started with. The smaller props weigh substantially less and should, in theory, be more likely to survive. We also went with a smaller pack to decrease the weight of the drone and the speed needed for liftoff. Now all we have to do is go outside and test them. Except this is Ohio and I'm impatient. We can't do the test outside because it's windy and raining. So unfortunately, we're not gonna get a really good audio comparison. We'll get something, but this is more about whether this can actually fly anyway. So what we've done is set up a couple GoPro cameras. So you can look over here. We have one GoPro on 240 frames per second here. We have another one that's gonna sit under the drone itself. So it's gonna be looking up at the drone as it takes off. And then I have an iPhone over here in slow motion as well. So I think that's all we're gonna do for preparations. We're gonna plug this thing in and see what happens. I think it'll hover. The annealing makes a big difference usually but I don't know how well it's gonna fly or for how long. So let's power it up. System ready. Enjoy your flight. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna see if this actually works. Um, the last couple tests haven't been so good. I think we're gonna be all right, but I'm just a little worried about the walls in the studio. All right, powering up. We have more work to do. Every prop explosion has had a common theme, layer separation. Printing the props flat instead of standing up will increase their strength by essentially moving the forces against the grain. Unfortunately, 3D printers aren't really optimized for this type of print unless you use supports. This means more prep and cleaning of the props and a final product that will be less smooth and more noisy. However, this will make them stronger we are going to stick with PETG since it's more durable than PLA, and we're still going to anneal the props to increase the bonds between the layers. Fortunately, Ohio and its meteorological mood swings are currently in our favor. While this might seem obvious to you, printing them flat makes a huge difference. You also notice the sound of the props is lower pitch. Quieter? Eh, not really, but the concept is there. I'm just glad that the dozens of hours of work, testing, and redesign have finally paid... Oh, crap. Anyone know where I can get an injection mold? The motors are surprisingly cool. Now, I did not run it very hard. That was actually just kind of bobbing around. I was trying to give it a little bit of like back and forth to see if it would lose control or anything, but it actually held up really well. Now, granted, we blew the props, but it flew, and it definitely sounded very different. That's impressive. So I think we have a winner. You have to print them flat to make them strong enough, at least with this design and PTG. You guys should definitely take these and make them your own and see if you can make them more durable. Maybe try, I don't know about carbon fiber, that's probably super sketchy, but you could do some other things with other filaments that could be stronger or maybe use some kind of an epoxy coating. I uh, would be really interested to see how that goes, but that's awesome. Experimenting with these props has been a lot of fun. And as promised, I am gonna leave links to all of these designs in the description. That includes the ones that we actually got to fly. That also includes toroidal props, which I actually haven't made a video about yet. This one fits the Avada. And speaking of the Avada, there is even a tiny, cute little Mark Rober zip line, if you will, prop for the Avada. The blades probably need to be a little bigger. I don't think they're gonna catch enough air, but I will leave links in the description for that as well. And it does fit the hub so you guys can kind of reverse engineer these and do whatever you want with them. Keep in mind, this stuff is pretty dangerous, but we do make the assumption that if you fly FPV drones and you know how to 3D print, you probably have an understanding of the risks involved. So do be safe with this because it can hurt somebody. I've had pieces fly two to 300 feet away from a drone when the props blow apart.
If you guys would like a tutorial on how to draw these props, leave some comments and I will make that video right away. It's actually pretty simple, but I will get that tutorial posted if you guys wanna see it. And if you've had a good time, we ask you to give us a like and subscribe to our channel because we have some more crazy content coming this way. We'll see you in the next one.